So you're getting a hang of Redux and you're starting to use it in your application. However, now you need to query your database to get some data. Up until now, you've only been using synchronous actions in your reducers. How can you send an API request to get some data in? So in today's video, we're going to cover just that. We're going to create a small app that loads quotes from a server and displays them in our application. As you can see, we have one load quote button here. When we click on it, we'll send a request to the server and load a new quote. So I've already got my synchronous app set up. Let me walk you through it. So we have our main app.js where we're importing in our app, which is called the Redux async app and passing in our store using the provider. Coming to the store, we're creating our store and passing in one reducer, which is our quote reducer. If we have a look at our reducer, it just handles one action, which is called load quote, and it has an initial state, which has the default quote, which we can see over here. Lastly, our actions is just one action creator, which is called load quote, and it sends the type load quote. Looking at our Redux async app, all of this is combined together with map state to props to map our default code to our code. And then we map our action load code to our dispatched load code action. We finally connect it all together using connect to tie it up to our Redux app. Here you can see we're using the code using this.props.code and calling load code using this.props.load code. So as of now, clicking on load code is gonna call our action in our reducer, which is load code and it returns an object with a new code called new code. We're going to change this up to load this code in from the server. And every time we click load code, it's going to be a new code that comes in. For all Breaking Bad fans like me, these are all going to be Breaking Bad codes from an API which is free to use for everyone. So every time we click load code, we want to make a request to our API and get some new codes. As we know, we can't do this in our reducer. Our reducer needs to be pure and it cannot have any side effects like API calls. So that means we have to do it somewhere else. The other logical place would be to do it in our action creator. So let's go to our code actions file. And here right now, we're just returning a plain JavaScript object. Let's get rid of this and try and make a call to our API here. To make our API call, I'm gonna be using something known as Axios. To install Axios, just type npm install Axios. And once that's installed, you can just import it here saying import Axios from Axios. Next, let's try and make our API call now. So we'll say axios.get. I'm just gonna paste in the API link here. Let's handle the promise. And here, let's just log out our response. Now, if we click load code, we get an error here, which says actions must be plain objects. Use custom middleware for async actions. That means we need a way to run an API call inside our action. Something that enables us to do that is a middleware known as Redux Thunk. So let's go ahead and install that. So we'll say npm install Redux Thunk. Let's go ahead and apply that middleware to our app. So going to our store, let's import in apply middleware here on the top. And let's import in Thunk from Redux Thunk. Let's pass in the middleware as the second argument by saying apply middleware and passing in Thunk. Now if we click load code, we're still getting that error. That's because Redux Thunk allows us to return a function instead of just a plain JavaScript object. So we need to wrap our API call into a function. So here we'll say return and we have the dispatch and get state methods available to us from Redux. And now if we save that out and click load code, we see we don't get that error anymore. If we just open up our debugger, we see we're getting our data returned from the server. Now let's combine this practically into our application. So basically, when we make an API request, there are three parts to it. The first one is when we start the API request. That's the time we want to show a loading indicator on our screen. Once the request completes, we want to store the data into our store. And in case there's an error, we want to display an error. So for that, let's go modify our reducer to handle three different actions. So here, instead of load code, let's make the first action type as load code start. So when our API request starts, We'll modify our state by returning a new object. So we'll say object.assign so that we don't mutate the state. We'll pass an empty object in which we'll pass in our current state. And in our state, we'll modify our is loading flag to true. This is something we'll add to our initial state as well. And we'll say is loading and set it to false initially. Our second case would be load code success. 
That is when our API call has successfully completed. I'm just going to duplicate this here and pass it down. And here we'll change is loading to false, but here we'll also modify our code by passing in the action dot payload. Lastly, in the load code failure, we'll pass in an error and here we'll say action dot payload again and we'll set is loading to false. For that, let's also set up an error flag here and set the error to null. Now in our code actions, before our Axios request is made, we'll dispatch a load code start action. So we'll say type load code start. In case of a failure, we'll say catch, we'll catch the error and we'll say dispatch type load code failure and pass in the payload as the error. Here, once the response is successful, we'll say dispatch, the type will be load code success and the payload will be response.data. We need only the first code and then we need the code. This is just accessing the JSON that we've been returned. And let's fix this typo here. This should be dispatch. Now let's come to our Redux async app. Here, let's first map our state to props by saying is loading is equal to state dot is loading and error is equal to state dot error. Here, let's import an activity indicator. And here, let's keep it simple by passing in a this dot props dot is loading. Check if that is true. If it is true, then we want to show the activity indicator. If it is false, then I just want to show my code. If I save that out, and now if I click load code, you see we're getting our activity indicator. And as I see, this indicator is not going away. That's because here, once our load code success completes, we want to set it to false. Now, if you try that again, we get the loading indicator and then we get a new code. Clicking on load code again, we get another code loaded. Similarly, you can check if there's any error and display an error on your screen or show an alert, whichever way you like. So that completes our introduction in using async actions in Redux using Redux Thunk. Thank you.